Hello and welcome to this new video on Spacey. In this video I'm going to show you how to actually look at a sequence of tokens that have a specific entity type and assign a new entity to that token, those tokens collectively, so a multi-word token. And this is something that I'm doing right now at the Smithsonian for finding plant species and genus in a large text database of uh, things that talk about plants. So we're trying to extract scientific names. And I was able to get a, uh, a pipeline that works for extracting based on a sequence of patterns, about 104,000 uh, different things like families, different things like um, genus and species. And these patterns are already set up um, in a JSON file that you can use if you want to in this repo. Uh, and they look kind of like this. They have, this is a species name, and there's other ones in this that actually display things like family, and then there's some in here that also talk about, uh, have records for genus. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using these patterns to look and try to identify and extract uh, genus, family, and species of plant names, and they're scientific plant names. So in order to do this, we're going to import spacey. We're going to say from spacey import displacey, and we're going to import JSON. I think these are the three libraries we actually need to do this. And I'm going to go ahead and load in all of my patterns. So patterns is going to be equal to, um, actually, we're going to need to do with open uh, data all data dot JSON. We're going to read it. Coding is going to be equal to UTF-8, which is Unicode, as F. And then we're going to say uh, data, actually we're going to say patterns, is equal to json.load F. And let's take a look and see what these patterns look like. Let's say patterns, let's just look at the first 10. So this is what they look like. In this case, we're looking for something that has a direct match to this particular sequence. And we are looking for it to, um, we're going to be assigning it the label of species. Great. So what we can do with this is we can create a blank NLP model. Even though these are all Latin, the text is English, which is important for tokenization here. And to this, we're going to be adding a ruler. And this is going to be NLP.add pipe. And this is going to be an entity ruler because we're going to just use these patterns and inject these patterns into that entity ruler. So we can do this by saying ruler.add patterns. And then we can say, um, what did I call this? Patterns up above? Yeah, patterns. And with this, uh, this pipeline now in place, one of the things that we can do is we can now run this over a sample text that I have. Go ahead and run this. And this is code I just wrote out for you. All this is really doing is using Displacey with some custom colors to represent a family, genus, species, and our ultimate goal by nominal. And we'll see that in just a second. And the text that we're working with is just a sample of something I grabbed on the orchid family from Wikipedia. Nothing, nothing too particular, nothing too long. And as you can see, it's successfully identified uh, something like family here. These are correct. Uh, you're going to see some false positives. Uh, we were able to find uh, all the different genera, or uh, the plural of genus. If we go down, we do start to see where the issue occurs. It occurs in two places. Uh, we want to be able to extract instances like this. This is what we would call a binomial. So it's a D period followed by a species. In this case, the D stands for Drymoda, which is a type of genus, and this is the abbreviation of that genus. So we want to be able to extract that correctly as binomial. And the next thing that we want to be able to do is be able to extract instances such as this as binomial. So an occurrence where we see a genus followed by a species as an entity type. Now, here's a great example of why this is important. If we try to just include all species names that exist, yeah, we absolutely could do that. The problem is the quantity of patterns we'd have to actually match are in the millions, which means it would take a very long time to actually run the entity ruler. Instead, what we can do is we can set up a entity ruler to first find genus and species, and then a very simple single pattern to just look at any instance of genus followed by species, and then assign that a new label of binomial because that's a binomial species name. So how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to use two entity rulers in tandem, one after another. Before we get to that, let's add a little thing right here, a new cell, and we're going to come up with our binomial pattern. Make that equal to an open list, and let's go down here. Okay, so our first sequence that we're going to look for, our first pattern, is going to be a sequence of, there we go, 
it's going to be a sequence of tokens. We want the first token, so within this bracket here, we're going to say int type. We want that to be equal to genus. And then we're looking for a, another token, int type, that is going to be equal to species. What we're able to do is within this list for the pattern, we're able to pass essentially a sequence of tokens delineated by um, a, a dictionary. And so what we can do now is we can say this is the pattern that we're looking for. And we want to make sure that that pattern has the label of binomial. Binomial. There we go. That's the technical term for two names in the scientific community. And we've got that closed up. I'm going to be adding another pattern here, but I want to pause there for just a second. Once we execute this cell, we've loaded that pattern into memory. The next thing that we need to do is we need to create a custom config for that so that the, the entity ruler can actually overwrite it. So we can do this by saying by nominal config. And we want this config overwrite ints. We want to have the ability to overwrite ints and make that equal to true. So you'll see how we can do this now in just a second. So we need, we've got our first ruler. Let's by nominal ruler. We're going to make another ruler and add it also into the pipeline dot add pipe and this is an entity ruler but were I to try and add this to the pipeline right now we would have a problem we'd have an error and the reason for that is because spacey can only have one pipe of uh, only have one name for one unique name for each pipe so they can't have the same name of entity ruler however it is an entity ruler pipe so what we need to do is we need to pass in the keyword argument of name we're gonna call this uh, why not we just call it by nominal ruler and then we're going to pass in our special config so that it has the ability to actually overwrite by nominal config. And if we execute this, we should have no error anymore. Fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and just put this on a different line so it's easier to read. There we go. And now we need to actually add this pipe into our NLP object, our pipeline. So what we can do is we can also say, uh, we need to say by nominal ruler add patterns and we need to pass in our binomial pattern right here so we're going to pass in that single keyword argument and everything should work just fine if we run this again now we're going to be able to find binomial patterns where there is a species or a genus followed by a species so a sequence of tokens that matches that specific pattern. And the reason why we have to do this as two separate pipes is because this entity ruler is dependent upon the entities annotated by this ruler. So again, this is just a way to have two pipes that work in tandem that allow for us to radically reduce the quantity of material we actually have to have in our entity ruler and to make it more efficient. Here we're seeing binominals already being flagged, but I really want to go down here. We're seeing these now flagged as binominal. Notice, however, that if we scroll back up, we don't yet have these correctly identified. So we need to write a pattern to grab any occurrence of a, maybe a capitalized lettered followed by a sequence of, of lowercase letters followed by a period and then followed by an entity type of species. So let's go ahead and try that out right now. So let's go back up to our binomial pattern. Here we are. We're going to add in one other pattern here. And this is going to be a new pattern, and we're going to have first, oops, the first thing we're going to look for is for text to match a regex, a regex formula. In this case, our regex formula is going to be fairly straightforward. Um, it's going to be anything from A to Z, followed by anything lowercase a to Z. So we're looking for something that's going to have an uppercase, followed by anything lowercase, possibly because it might not actually have that. It might just be one uppercase letter followed by a period. And then what we're going to look for, once we've got that, that's the first token. The next thing we're looking for is it for it to have an int type that corresponds to species. So we're making a, a prediction here that any occurrence of a token that looks like this followed by a token that has the entity type of species is probably binomial. That's a fairly good guess because out of all the stuff I've looked at, I have not seen a false positive with this. But you are going to see one significant problem here, and it's a problem because of tokenization. Oop, 
what did I do wrong? Uh, label is going to correspond to that. Oh, I didn't close out my list. There we go. I think that's going to be all right now. Species. Oh, there's we go. I need to have a squiggly bracket there, and we can get rid of that squiggly bracket there. Now everything should work just fine. Let's go ahead and just rerun these cells. We're loading in these more complex patterns now into our binomial ruler. And once again, let's just make sure that's done. It is. Let's go ahead and re-execute this. So recreating this doc object here. And you're going to see that this is now going to work the way we intended with a few minor problems that's due to tokenization, not due to the entity ruler. So let's scroll down and you're going to see now in our paragraph, we have correctly identified these instances where we've got D period uh, digitata, in this case, Drymoda digitata, uh, and we actually have grabbed those. What we have not grabbed successfully are these sequences here. Here we're seeing the B period um, gem uh, nopus. The, the problem here is not that our entity ruler is failing, it's that our tokenizer is not achieving everything correctly. And the reason for this is because of these footnotes here. Uh, we need to clean up our data just a little bit and essentially make sure that uh, any sequence of a bracket has a, a space between it. So let's go ahead and try to clean it up just a little bit by manually doing it right now instead of adjusting our tokenizer. We're going to replace any occurrence of a open bracket. We're going to replace it with a space in a bracket. And this might clean it up just a little bit. I didn't try this out ahead of time, but this should help the tokenizer along the way. And that's an artifact of the of the bad copy and paste from Wikipedia where the, uh, the footnotes are preserved in open and closed brackets. And if we scroll back down, we will see that we have those successfully removed. And it, look, lo and behold, it actually worked. So by simply adding that space with those brackets, no longer is it an issue. We do see one thing missed for reasons I'm... Oh, uh, the reason why this is missed here is because this is a occurrence where Drymoda could be a species, but it also could be a genus. And so I left these out because these are going to be important for manually tagging. And, um, and so I chose to err on the side of caution and have fewer false positives in order to understand that some things might be missed and would be needed for manual validation. Nevertheless, this is a very quick way to kind of uh, take two different entities in sequence and assign them a new label. Hopefully this helps you out. Uh, let me know in the comments down below. You will see there are false positives. India, most likely, yeah, in this scenario, it's referring to the country. We know that because there's a comma followed by Madagascar. It's not the actual genus here. This is the drawback of an entity ruler. It's not able to discern toponyms because we haven't given any rules to, to do that. But nevertheless, you're able to see how we can work in a new entity type by reading in a sequence of other entity types. Thank you. If you get a lot out of this channel, please do consider supporting it by joining it. You can find a link now in the description down below or support the channel via Patreon. Uh, all the money that I make from this channel goes to keeping it alive and keeping all the content free for everyone. And as always, thank you to all my members on this channel and all my Patreon supporters.